Talk TV for the stories that matter. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV weather. We really are getting quite fed up with this weather pattern, but again, very unsettled, quite windy at times as well. We've got low pressure gradually pulling away to give a brief ridge of high pressure on Friday night with a bit of frost before we see yet more weather systems come in from the Atlantic, bringing, yes, yet more rain, perhaps some quite wet weather developing as well later in the weekend in the south and east of the country, and another low pressure system for Tuesday and Wednesday. So a real mix of weather. We start off with very mild conditions though across most of England, Wales and Northern Ireland. There'll be heavy showers working from west to east here, particularly across the southeast, there are heavy downpours. And across the north, it's quite a wet picture, dull and wet and increasingly chilly as well as a northerly wind sets in across Scotland and Northern Ireland. But I'm fairly hopeful that by the end of the day, it will turn a bit brighter across much of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Temperatures lower in the north, still 12 to 14 across southern and eastern Britain. Now, after a bit of frost first thing Saturday, particularly across the north, it will gradually cloud over from the west so if you're out and about Saturday the morning looks best for you then through the afternoon expect some rather dull dreary and wet weather to come in and that wet weather looks quite active actually on Saturday night temperatures around 9 to 12 Celsius Times Radio sponsors talk TV weather the ghost of Margaret Thatcher. She said you've got to watch. That was the woke that was 10 o'clock Saturday night with Lizzie Cundy, Henry Bolton, Pete Barnes and of course... And it's Friday. That's right. And I know that I'm not talking to a single nine to fiver here on Early Breakfast. Do you remember when Friday was something important, an event, that hooray, it's the weekend, but I'm guessing that you might be a shift worker, that you're either ending your day or you're beginning your day, and that certainly there ain't much difference between a Saturday afternoon and a wet Wednesday night. Hmm? Tell me what you're up to, 03444991000, and I'll tell you what I'm up to this morning. Uh, there's a real diverse selection of headlines this morning, and we've got, because it's Friday, because, well, like, it, there is some significance to Friday, because hospitality is our focus on Friday with Elton Mooner. And uh, Elton often comes into the studio, I get him, I get him a full portrait, uh, full portrait with a hit me with a rhythm stick green uh, uh, suit on, a uh, member of the Ian Drury and the Blockheads, he was there, believe it or not. Now, we have these stories and I'm just wondering because of all the hype that's going around the general election because they're starting to do these set piece interviews I saw Rishi Sunak out and about yesterday and the same goad for uh, same went for I just said goad <laughs> it is a Friday isn't it oh the same goad oh so I feel like it's Professor Stanley Unwin oh fiddly bowed gold um Anyway, let's get back to business and action. Because Rishi Sunak was out and about, uh, I'm trying to really wreck my brains and remember what he wanted to talk about, but the media wanted to talk to him about Frank Hester, this guy who was given £10 million, no, £15 million to the Conservative Party. He's won lots of contracts. They're asking him to give his money back because of the comments he made about um, Diane Abbott. Uh, and that um, a lot of this quiet about uh, the quotes he made in a 2019 meeting, apparently. I'm going to read it to you. Um, you just want to hate all black women. I mean, you know, you can't say that and you shouldn't say that. And uh, he hasn't denied it either. He said, sorry, he's full of remorse. 
Mind you, she's not much better, is she? I'm not. I don't, I'm not into what what's about her, but she says things uh, which can be construed as anti-Semitic as well, race baiting as well. But that's not the point. The point is that he said it, and the Tories are under pressure to give the money back. I don't think they will give the money back, especially when they'll need it in opposition. Or will they? Because yesterday I heard Keir Starmer say that they're going to continue um, ploughing money into the arts, OK, even though there's a bit of a recession on. Because as Winston Churchill said during the Second World War, I'm not going to uh, banish the arts budget in favour of, you know, the military because... Um, if we banish the arts budget, what on earth are we fighting for? And that's a very, very good point. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. So the gloves are off already. Although Sunak, when he went round uh, the area, I think he went down to the West Country yesterday, and basically he said there's not going to be an election on May the second, which is when the local council elections are. So he's ruled that out. So the question is, and of course the pressure upon him, and we're seeing this in the eye this morning. Number 10 anxiety grows, you see the headline, uh, as angry Tories question Sunak's authority, and they keep doing this. Uh, the Prime Minister shouldn't leave the country because that's when coups happen, warns former Downing Street advisor. Sunak ends speculation he will hold an early general election, same day as the local polls, that's not going to happen. The PM plans policy blitz in the next week on crime, migration and the economy, hoping to prove he's still in charge of rebellious MPs and has ideas to revive the Tories in opinion polling. He hasn't got long left, though, that must be said. The hardening of mood among Tory MPs, furious at Number 10's handling of donors' uh, racist comments and a definite vibe shift. MPs have gone from being resigned, quitting to being angry one tells. If they're angry, they're intimating that actually the fight isn't over, is it? And still unclear if that anger will lead to many letters of no confidence in the Prime Minister. Now I'm asking you, what will come first? Rishi being replaced or a general election? Because there's no way that Rishi is going to be replaced at the 11th hour, is it? We can't have another Tory Prime Minister who wasn't elected because, you know, they, they won't win any votes. There's reform out there, there's an, a, 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 a reformed or, or an improved Labour proposition out there right so surely actually what will happen here is rather than Rishi being replaced a general election will be called what do you think oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand Rishi replaced or a general election Ooh, and uh, want your calls on that as well and also uh, it is uh, paper review time we and we're going to go for the the wheel of fun there from the roulette wheel as well as we, we can enjoy ourselves this Friday morning and by the way, I'm in for James Max today, as you know. James is back next Monday. I'm in tomorrow. I'm in for Christo tomorrow. Christo's doing the breakfast show as well, so uh, back to normal in comparative terms right here on Talk TV. And you know Grant Shapps was in the Daily Mail yesterday saying we should increase our um, defence spending from the current 2% to 3%. Well, there has been an immediate reaction from Putin, and I think probably this is what... Uh, Grant Shapps was reacting to because Russia attacked Shapps's RAF jet by jamming the GPS. Russian electronic warfare units jammed the GPS system of the Defence Secretary's RAF jet, triggering a major security alert. So Shapps was flying over the Baltic on Wednesday afternoon when his aircraft suffered a sudden satellite and communications blackout. The sustained high-tech assault on the plane's hardware is believed to have been initiated from Kaliningrad, which is a major um, Russian hub for this kind of espionage. Um, it's where their cyber and electromagnetic activities come from. The Russian enclave on the Baltic coast bordering Poland... And remember, Poland are spending 4% of their budget uh, on... 4% of their, of their economy on defence, because, of course, they, they, they border Russia, don't they? Where Mr Shapps has spent the day meeting UK troops taking part in NATO's biggest manoeuvres since the Cold War. And it was a £40 million Dassault 900LX executive jet which flew Mr Shapps from the UK. Uh, primarily, its globally positioned uh, system was suddenly rendered uh, not working. Gosh. So now you know the backstory. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about a general election? Do you want to talk about Sunak being replaced? Do you want to talk about the urgency of Grant Shapps saying we need to spend more on defence for 10 years or more? 
Our military has complained that our army is getting smaller, that we're not ready for any potential attack. It's as though we're sleepwalking into this new time. And here, here is the saddest picture, I think, don't you? There is a picture of Concorde on an aircraft carrier behind Manhattan. Now, for those of you who have been to New York, you will know that it's been sitting there on the side by the Hudson River for like 20 years because, of course, it's grounded. There's no more Concorde. And so basically what's happening now is it's heading across New York Harbour on its way home to the Intrepid Museum in Manhattan after being restored at Brooklyn Navy Yard. OK, that, I mean, it's been in America for so long and we're never going to see it again. And I think it's one of the saddest pictures because supersonic flight was so exciting. You could get to New York if you spent a lot of money on it in, what, three and a half hours? And now we have to wait seven and a half hours to get to New York. What a shame. I wonder if those days will ever come back or are we so obsessed with net zero that this kind of supersonic aeroplane will never, ever be uh, used again. Here's a lovely additional picture. It's from page 31 of your Times and there it is. I just want to say to you reading it here, despite its name, Concord's relationship with New York was not always one of peaceful coexistence because for a quarter of a century it carried stars in supersonic style to JFK, but on takeoff it was always forced to veer awkwardly to the left to avoid disturbing residents with its noise because, of course, they all live on the 108th floor, don't they? Now, after a seven-month restoration at Brooklyn Navy Yard, Concord has returned to the Intrepid Museum in Manhattan. It's 78,000 kilograms, by the way. It's decommissioned, unable to travel by land, let alone by air. Its 84-foot wingspan made it too wide to fit in New York's tunnels or bridges, and it was taken by barge on a final journey up the East and Hudson Rivers. And I certainly, if I'd have been there, I would have saluted it. Great Anglo-French technology, wasn't it? Concorde arrived yesterday morning and was lifted by a 300-foot crane into its final resting place on Pier 86. And the pier was open to spectators from 9 o'clock in the morning. What a shame, what a shame. Oh, British engineering, eh? 0344 499 1000. Don't forget, you can also do this these days. You can talk into your WhatsApp machine on your phone and leave a pithy voice note so you don't have to just confront me on air you can leave something of 15 seconds or even longer via your voice note system and this is what simon did it's johnny good the man with many voices <laughs> so dave did this man with many voices can you hear that? it's johnny good are you scared yet <laughs> And that's the nearest to Michael Jackson I will ever get, I assure you, 03444991000. Diane Abbott is the subject of our first caller today. Pat in London, morning to you, Pat. Oh, good morning, Johnny. Look, I mean, I'm not so... I mean, what the man said was wrong. Totally you, you're wrong. talking about Frank Hester here, aren't you? The donor yeah. to the Tory party, yeah. Yeah, but the, what I don't understand is, like most of these things... He said it in 2019, and mm. it's been dug up now mm. because it's an election year. Yeah. I mean, what is it? Rele it should have been relevant then, not now. I know, I know. Because it's 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 in the past. So some some you know person in the Labour or whatever, whoever has dug it up. As I say, I'm not saying it was right; it was wrong. But you, to dig it up four or five years later is. It shouldn't be relevant. But that's how it works. I mean, there's files everywhere on all sorts of people ready to be used at key times. And unfortunately, if you say something as stupid as that, uh, and you, you're going to get reported, and they had this on him for years and years and years, and they found the time to cause most damage. And let's face it, in the electoral cycle, Pat, it's 2024. It would have had no use in 2020 it might have brought boris down they probably thought about releasing it then during the pandemic but they decided he was in enough trouble already and indeed uh, he did get sue grade didn't he? he sort of got got cleared out by that sort of party gate business eating cake but as you say pat unfortunately there are files on lots of public figures and this is how it does it they use the media cycle the news cycle to cause maximum damage and they have caused maximum damage haven't they pat 
point is, what should happen now? Mm. It, I mean, not just for that, but for for past decades or years, it's, if you don't get it done within that year, it's irrelevant. It's 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 it can't be used. What I'm saying is, if, if somebody's done something, even if it was six months ago, you're allowed to use it. But if it was like past twelve months, that is that. This is the what I, if I was sort of like making policy if it's gone past a 12 month period it's not relevant it's it's inconsequential because you you should only use it when the that type of news comes like is is fresh news when i say fresh news yeah, i know exactly what within you mean a year. the only problem with that pat is the old maxim which is you can't unsay something and <laughs> if there was a calendar year where, no, no, that should have been used by May the 14th, 2020, because that's the anniversary of the time, someone would say, well, unfortunately, it still stands. And, of course, um, moral mores go up and down, don't they? So something that was, I mean, it was never acceptable to say that about Diane Abbott. But, no, you know, things, things change in society. Things become more urgent. And arguments about racism... Uh, sort of go up and they go down. And Diane Abbott has also been, um, you know, on the wrong side of um, some very, very dodgy comments. Do you remember she had? She's she in fact she has she she's not she's not on the whip. She's not a Labour MP technically within uh, the the Houses of Parliament because of the comments she made uh, about uh, racism having a hierarchy that people with red hair or Jewish people didn't suffer racism as much as black people and it's a preposterous thing to say and yes you know she has questions to ask about her uh, alleged racism and this is what uh, precipitated frank hester's comments but that doesn't excuse it either that's the thing pat and you know unfortunately it has caused maximum damage pat thank you very much for your point oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand james in manchester is with us good morning johnny can you answer me this Hamas has significant meaning to the Palestinians as an embedded in their culture. Can Hamas become a serious political party and redeemed in some way? No, is the short answer. And what is happening currently in Gaza is a standoff between Israel and the United States over whether Israel can prosecute the final part of its war against terror. Because Israel has steadily made military progress and destroyed 18 of Hamas's 24 battalions. And Hamas's last stand is in Rafah, which is near the Egyptian border. But the bad news in terms of military objectives is there's also a million or more citizens there of, uh, of the Palestinian uh, of, of Gaza. And they've got to be moved out somehow. And this is what's holding it up. Uh, meanwhile, they are handing in aid as much as they can. Um, but the problem with aid is that it always just goes to Hamas and it's stolen. I mean, this is the problem. Who's running the country? 0344 499 1000. And we're going to go to Lenny in Ashford. Lenny, morning to you. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Lenny. Uh, yeah, well, uh, to start off with, uh, I've, I've, I've been in Spain for 90 days. Right. So welcome back. So I've got I've come home and I've got plenty to do the weekend. So I will not be moving anywhere. Well, so, I'll speak uh, to you tomorrow morning then, because I'm on early breakfast as well. Okay, then, mate. I'll, I'll make a date with that then, mate. <laughs> and uh, but regarding the Conservatives, uh, and and I mean, I have been a Tory all my life. Never voted for anybody else, but have not voted for many years. And, uh, what was what the last is, election you voted on, Lenny? Was it 83 or I a bit more recently? Was, no, it, 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 it was a long time ago. It, uh, I discovered when Cameron uh, won the election, I think it was 2010, and, and I discovered then that uh, what they're saying, their manifestos and the, what they were saying didn't mean anything. You know, and, uh, 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 you know, I, I could go into more detail if you want to. Well, look, but I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is that this manifesto, which was Boris Johnson's, 
is miles away from Rishi Sunak in the sense that there's been two prime ministers since him. So this yeah. mandate is kind of over. It was over when Boris Johnson left. Well, I, 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 I truly believe that, you know, when you look at the mentality of the con since the Conservatives have been in, is basically, the, uh, and while we've got a country in such a state, the donors have been running the country and not the Conservative Party. Yeah, this is this is always the thing. I mean, I don't know what Frank Hester's motivation is for donating such a huge amount. Maybe to get into the House of Lords, or maybe to win a few contracts, or maybe he's maybe he's a man who really believes in the Conservative uh, project. But uh, yeah, you know that's the thing. I mean, it's an, an incredibly large amount of money. I remember years ago the late Stuart Wheeler gave five million pounds to the Conservative Party, and they lost the election, and that was the end of his five million pounds. They were in opposition, and I would imagine this is not dissimilar to Frank Hester because uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the general election but they're certainly miles away behind the polls and they put out a tweet yesterday um, last night uh, showing Rishi Sunak clucking like a like a chicken the idea that he's not calling a general election for a while because he said I'm not going to be on on May the 2nd with the local elections we're going to have a general election much later on in the year but he's only got until I think January 2025 to call that election Lenny uh, now, let's talk about something else. Lenny, spin the wheel. We're going to spin the wheel. Wee! That's right. Here it is. The roulette wheel. I'm going to spin it again because we're, you know, it's, it's, it's televisual. There we go. Wee! And it's arrived. Oh, it's arrived at the Times, Lenny. This is the uh, newspaper of, the, um, of Concord. Which page do you want? Well, we'll add number 27 again, James, because that was an interesting one when we... Uh... Uh, yesterday that I spoke to you. Yeah. And by the way, James is back on Monday. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll, sorry, Johnny. I got it. That was good. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a nice little sachet for me to say James is back on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> 27. It's a fresh paper, so it's quite difficult to open. Forgive me. Oh, we're going past the... Oh, dear. We're going past the crosswords and section. I'm sorry about this. I'll be right with you. Bum, 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 bum. OK, 27. Oh, it's the letters page. It's the letters page, OK. Um, inadequate school meals are damaging children and must be consigned to the past. Um, how difficult is it to bake a potato? That was the heartfelt question asked by Jason Ashley, the headmaster of a school in Southampton, when sharing images of a failure on a plate, a greenish potato topped with grey matter, which may have involved tuna, a carton of baked beans and tired-looking chips, and other items that were visually unidentifiable. Mr Ashley was writing a direct apology to parents over the consistently poor quality of school meals dished up by the Chartwells, the leading provider of catering services. Services. You know, this is the problem. You know, they're, they're, it's not a profit centre, a school meal. It's very, who's very important to nourish our kids when their brains are growing. Well, who's got the contract in providing the meal? Yeah, Chartwell, apparently they're called. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, no, the thing well, is, I mean, in my, in my day, they used to be dinner ladies at school and they were hired by the school. Oh, I used to love my school dinners. Did you, uh, Johnny? Yeah, I did. Yeah, but obviously I'm a different generation to you. But, but they were, as you say, dinner ladies, and and, and everything was was freshly cooked yes, on the premises. That's right. And they now resort to sort of oven chips and sort of chicken nuggets and things that you get out of a pack. I remember oh, in yes. my day it was so fresh that the fish and chips in the fish still had bones in it, which for kids is a bit of a problem. <laughs> it it yeah, sort of put well, me off for a while. You know, yeah, you know, the, you know, you are what you eat, you know, and, and, and if they're giving ch children, you know, food that is no good to them, then it's all part of the human body acting correctly, isn't it? Indeed. Lenny, thank you for your contributions this week and today. Uh, morning to you if you've been on text this morning uh, from WhatsApp 656. Good morning, Johnny. Scary episode for Mr Shapps. We're talking about this story here in the Daily Mail where uh, Grant Shapps said we must start spending more on our defence because we're not spending enough. Uh, we need to be 3%. Guess what? His jet, when he went off to the NATO meeting in Poland, uh, the jet was jammed by um, Russian espionage. Scary episode then. 
Uh, maybe he, Tommy T and Johnny Mercer could gather around and persuade extra defence funding and the hand removed from the creepy ventriloquist dummies, Jeremy Hunt, behind him for humanity's sake. I mean, you know, God. Um, we do need more money on our defence. We are living in a completely different environment. And Grant Shapps may not be Defence Secretary for long, but he will have left a bit of a legacy to say there's a warning ahead. The post-war settlement is coming to an end. We are potentially entering a pre-war settlement, which means more than 2% of our national income to be spent on defence. Uh, Roger, morning Roger, I think Rishi will last the course and limp on to a general election until it's called in early December. This is Roger's prediction. Sir Keir may as well as start choosing his new curtains and wallpaper for number 10, as I feel a Labour landslide is inevitable. And P.S. I won a moderate £280 at Cheltenham yesterday. Well, the weekend drinks are on you, Roger. Many congratulations. 0344 499 1000. We're going to take a short break. Your calls, your comments... Couldn't do it without you. This is Early Breakfast. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingham City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media, having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Three four 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 nine nine one thousand. The lights are up and everyone is home here. Thank you very much for your contributions. We're going to go straight to the lines. What was going to come first, Rishi replaced or a general election? And the eye normally gets a nice headline together and with little sub-headlines, and it's done it uh, very well today, summarising the threat, I think, to Rishi Sunak. A lot of anxiety amongst backbenchers as angry Tories question Sunak's authority. But we are so near a general election, but not as near 
as was rumoured yesterday when Rishi Sunak went around and said to on TV station down in the West Country, look, it's not going to be on May the 2nd, the general election. It's not going to be on the same day as the local elections. So it's going to be somewhere between the late spring, the summer, autumn, and even up to after Christmas uh, in early January. It's going to be somewhere in there. OK, and I think rather than Rishi Sunak being forced to step down, he'll probably do what John Major did, which is it's time to put up and shut up. And then he did an election... And um, that was that, 03444991000. So what will come first, Rishi replaced or a general election? Let's go to Norwich and talk to Eric. Eric, morning. Morning, Johnny. Hope you're all right. I'm all right, thanks. How are you doing? I think I'm fine, yeah. I've still got a pulse. <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. And how do you want to use your pulse on the show this morning? Well, I, uh, I, I just don't know what corrupt politician you would put in Rishi's, uh, Rishi's <laughs> place because whatever he says you can't believe... You know, and uh, to take that um, £10 million, pounds, that reeks of, uh, you know, self-interest. Yeah, the mandate is shot, isn't it? I mean, I, it's not a joke to suggest that we're still in the embers of the 2019 general election, which was supposed to be Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, to get Brexit done. That seems like history now. We're so far down the road. Liz Truss was Prime Minister for 44-odd days. They were odd. And then and then Rishi Sunak is like miles away from the mandate. I mean, really, never has a general election been more required to reset where our country's going. I know, you just I, that's just uh, impossible to say. But I just think when they take money from um, these donors who get peerages and uh, get these big uh, mm, contracts, mm. I think that's absolutely... Are totally corrupt, and that you know that that shouldn't be so. They should all just get five million pounds, perhaps each, to run the general election from the government, and that would be it. What do you think about that? In in other countries, other democracies, there is a central fund for all political parties to avoid this sort of potential for corruption. I mean, if there was a political will to bring this in, that there was a central fund so that, you know, X million pounds went, you know, and it was a proportion based upon electoral voting. So, uh, you know, the Lib Dems would get less than Labour, who would get less than the Tories, based upon the 29 general election. So, so do you think that's a good idea? I mean, certainly that would avoid corruption, but I just don't think there's the political will. I think they'd rather have this system where they can have a bit more, a bit more entrepreneurial with the cash coming in. I think that's what they'd rather have. But all parties, actually. Well, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you, you, if you have, I mean, Labour take get their money from. Um, they, they also have donors as well. Of course, they do. Yeah. And they, but they get the money from the unions, and uh, they have, uh, and the unions put people up like this, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, and uh, then they put up uh, Boris Johnson, the clown. You know, you just. You just can't... Well, you couldn't write it, could you, really? You couldn't write it, and it has been written. It's well documented in our history. Eric, should we spin the wheel? Go on, then. Yeah, spin the wheel. We, yes, sir, Bob. Ah, oh, there it is. It's the Wheel of News. And we are in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, what page would you like between 1 and 30? Um, let's have uh, 5. Page 5. And by the way, just before I do that, there's a picture of Fergie and Big Sam, the two football managers there at the front, uh, because he won on two horses yesterday at Cheltenham. The guy is just a serial winner, isn't he, old Fergie? Uh, page yeah. 5. Um... I'll just turn over to you again. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah, ah. I couldn't help notice the red tie, by the way. Oh, thank uh, you very much. Is that a, um, a premonition? <laughs> yeah, is, is it a prediction? Well, don't forget, it's Labour in Britain, but it's also the Republicans in America. Oh, goodness me, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I am not being partisan, I can assure you, but is it a prediction? Who knows? Maybe maybe it could be a, a, a unique double. I'll just ask Sir Alex Ferguson about that, because he seems to be winning on every bit. Uh, green ideology puts a knife into patient welfare... And this is a little graphic here about ambulance costs. OK. Um, carbon emissions by the sector. You know, 0.4% of NHS emissions are caused by emergency ambulances. 
3.5% of all road travel is related to NHS visitors, patients, staff and suppliers, and 5% of the UK's carbon emissions are caused by the NHS each year. 70 miles is the average distance an electric ambulance can travel, and four hours is how long it could take for them to charge. 135, are you following all this? I mean, I, I mean, honestly, when this green ideology interferes with people's health and when the newly industrialised world is building coal foundries and continuing with its oil sales, while we're worried about what Greta Thunberg says, honestly, we are losing the plot, aren't we? Well, I just wonder where they get these statistics from, you know, yeah. lies, damn lies, and then statistics. Yes, e the... exactly. It's just statistics, isn't it? And uh, I'm glad you brought that up. It was a, a pithy page to have picked. Eric, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you, and you. It's thank you, mate. That's Eric from Norwich. And should we go to Kevin in Basingstoke? Let's do it. Welcome, Kevin. Morning. Morning. Yeah, my prediction is uh, the Conservatives will do really badly in the local election. Mm -hmm. Um they'll uh, replace uh, Rishi with somebody even further to the right. Right. And they'll be even more unelectable. Will that stymie the reform progress, though? If they pick someone who's more right-wing, so, for example, let's pick the former Home Secretary out of the hat there, uh, Suella Braverman, or maybe Kemi Badenoch, well, won't that stymie Richard Tyson, the gang over at reform? Well, the thing is, reform, I mean, they're only... They're only uh, their poll vote is like ten percent. Well, no, it's, it's a bit more actually now. They they're going 12, up a bit. Twelve. Since Lee Anderson, yes, yeah, I saw one with fourteen percent. This is all after Lee Anderson defected. Yeah, but I mean, the, the reformer on twelve, the mm. Conservatives on about uh, twenty, and Labour on forty-seven. So yeah. you know, the, if the parties that are too far to the right are not popular, are they? they I aren't. mean. I mean, they would, they need to be more centre ground. They're never going to be they're never going to be popular. They could go even further to the right. Yeah, they, you know, elections are won in the centre, and we haven't really got that. Maybe Labour is the most central, and there's this bit of civil war on the backbench, as you say, with the Tories, whether they are centrist, whether they could be called Tories anymore, or indeed whether they are too far to the right to actually win an election. Can I just point you back to 2017, though, where Theresa May was the flavour of the month, and she won her local elections convincingly and it emboldened her to go for a general election which she then cocked up. The manifesto didn't work at all and it ended up as a hung parliament and her majority was reduced. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, I mean, and no, Corbyn uh, kind of started to think, hey, I've got a chance here. The thing is, she didn't do any debates, did she? She no. was silent. Yeah, it was really a... She was silent and complacent, I think, is the word. Well, yeah, she was. I mean, that... that I don't know why, whoever was advising her, I mean, they got it badly wrong, didn't they? Did they didn't They could really got it ba badly wrong, didn't they? Kevin, let's spin the wheel. Oh, it's the wheel of fortune in our newspaper review, bingo, and we have arrived at... I'll, I'll tell you what, we did the time, so let's do it again. <laughs> and let's see if we can do... Oh, The Guardian, The Guardian. Do I need my marigold gloves? I think I do. I'm going to get help here. Here comes Dave. Dave is literally running through while I find the, the Guardian. What page would you like between 1 and 44? Um, 4. Thank you very much. Do I have to put it on? Yeah. No, it's, I feel like Glenn Ganley, the old snooker player, uh, snooker ref. Uh, Steve Davis, 25. Or, or do I have to put other ones on as well? I'll just put one on. I can't put it on. I feel like Michael Jackson. Uh, what page do you want? Page 40? Page... Uh, I can put them on properly, never mind. Number 4. Number, number 4. Here we go. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, okay. Oh, gosh. Um, um, Aust here we go. Here's, here's something for you from The Guardian. Um, let me try and zoom this in. It is um, a proposal of marriage in front of a football stadium. OK, I'm just going to read this for you. Um, he scores. <laughs> Trailblazing Australian footballer announces engagement, OK? This is Australian footballer Josh Cavallo, who in 2021 became the only known gay top-flight player in the world at the time, has got engaged to his partner Leighton Morell after proposing to him on the pitch of Adelaide United's home ground. Cavallo made international headlines three years ago when he came out publicly announcing he was ready to speak about something personal that I'm finally comfortable to talk about in my life. Yesterday, Cavallo thanked his A-League club for its support since 
since he came out and his subsequent advocacy for LGBTQ rights and for helping to set up the proposal at their home ground of the Cooper Stadium. I don't think gay people should have to come come out. I mean, yeah. straight people don't come out, do they? No, they I mean, don't. I mean, this is the thing, right? I mean, I've just sort of thought about this. You know, like, we do live in a conservative culture and uh, and gay marriage is comparatively new in society. And I do understand why people, even though it's a completely different social more now, and that being gay is just part of life, that you might, within your community, particularly if you're a religious person, a monotheistic religion, you might want to keep it to yourself for a while, even if perhaps that flies in the face of kind of where the world is now. Well, there's still a lot of hatred towards gay Absolutely people. Absolutely there is. Absolutely. Really? I, I, I confront it amongst my friends, and I think that's really strange. And I think to myself, when my friends, or, you know, not, not just one or two friends sort of say something which is a bit homophobic, I think, well, where do you stand? You know, <laughs> when are you going to come out if you have that attitude? I find it like as though they're scared of them or threatened by them. It seems such a strange thing, Kevin. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, homo uh, homophobia is not as bad as it used to be. No. But they've just changed it now and it, all the hatred goes towards trans people. Yes, you're right, and I think that is punching down as well. Uh, Kevin, thank you very much indeed for playing the Wheel of Roulette news. That's almost the words in the right order, but then it is a Friday. Welcome along, 0344 499 1000, and just when you thought it couldn't get more exciting, very soon we're going to have Elton Mooner in a suit of his choice, I do assure you, talking hospitality with you on the phones and calls and texts. So much going on. We'll talk about Rishi Sunak as well with a text which is coming in as well, loads and loads of it, uh, from, uh, from, I, oh, it doesn't get, please put your name on it. We'll speak to you in a second. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did the fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Um, what will come first, Rishi replaced or a general election? I think the Conservative Party uh, are dragging it out as long as they can, purely because they know they're going to lose Rishi Sunak. And to be honest, he's unelectable, says Text Five Hundred Eight. But do remember to put your name in. The man is just too rich and too removed from normality to know what normal people have to go through every day just to pay the bills and survive when it comes to defence spending in the UK. We need to spend loads more. For example, F-35 stealth fighters and uh, and the Navy operates. So, yeah, thank you very much. And on that subject, Dallas Nash, who always tweets me. Thank you, Dallas. You always entertain me with your tweets. And this one is no different. Morning, Johnny. The most worrying thing about the Grant Shapps incident, this is when the Russians jammed his uh, airline, the one that was taking him to Poland uh, to the NATO meeting, which meant that they lost communications with him for a few minutes. Uh, the, the worrying thing about this is how the Russians have the intel to know he was on that plane in the first place. My dad was a career RAF navigator. No jamming in his directional skills. Thank you very much indeed for that, uh, Dallas. And we'll have one more call before we go to Elton. And this is Michelle in Windsor. Hello, Michelle. Good morning. Morning. Um, I wanted to say that I think a lot of the problem is that we do, and perhaps it should be taught in schools, but we do not seem to understand how British politics work. Yeah. And I think it's something that the newspapers perpetuate. We don't have a president. We have a prime minister where, in this country, we elect local representatives who are supposed to represent local people and then they elect what is effectively a chairman. Rishi is not a president, he is a prime minister. So therefore, the ministers of the ruling party will get together and they elect the person that is most likely effectively to be their chair. And I think that that's something that people do not understand when we are being thrown the American electoral system down our throat, which is completely different, where you do elect a single person. It's a very, very good point. And if you look at France, where you can elect a president completely clear of any political allegiances, which is how President Macron has created En Marche, a party around his election victory as president. We have a slightly more stable democracy here, but you're absolutely right, Michelle. Thank you for the, the refresh. And I think most people uh, know this when they tune to Talk TV because we're that kind of punter here. Um, but, but thank you for that. It does actually, you know, I think politics should be taught in school. And I think from primary school as well, I think we need to be more politically aware, particularly these days, when it's such a, an omnipresent part of our discourse. Michelle, do you want to spin the wheel? Uh, yes, please. Oh, you go on. And uh, we're going to reach... Oh, um, oh, so I've got that wrong a bit. I'm not, I'd never make a croupier, would I? Uh, the sun. OK. <laughs> the sun, the sun, the sun. I love being... I love watching croupiers. No more bets, please, now. No more, thank you. That's all. 29 black. Um, now, what page would you like? Page 1 to 56. Well, as I've changed what's on page 3, let's see what it's been replaced with. Ooh, Mrs. I hope, oh, Mrs. Oh, well, no, it hasn't changed that much. Um, it's just that she's clothed a bit more. Should we pick another page? <laughs> OK, in that case, let's have number four. Number four. <laughs> Good. It's a lovely picture of Wills looking a bit like James Bond. 007. Ooh. 007, there he is. Bravo. Um, now, look, this is what the Villa fans said this morning, OK? Um, Prince William was whisked away from an event in honour of his beloved mother Diana last night, hours before his brother Harry made an address via video link. That's basically what they're saying. It's the front page here. Wills ducks Harry's speech. Warring Wills and Harry both supported the legacy of their beloved mum last night, but still couldn't heal their rift. So basically, Harry made his uh, speech on Zoom from, you know, Montecito in California, IA. Uh, but he left at 8.15, did Wills, and was long gone when Harry's message was beamed out at the event marking the 25th anniversary of the Diana Award. A quick word, Michelle, on where you think the status of these brothers are. Are they going to make up one day? Well, I think um, possibly want their heads banged together a little <laughs> bit. And uh, well, I think we've all had somebody that's uh, married someone and it's caused problems in the family. <laughs>
<laughs> Beautifully put, Michelle. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. And I'm going to have a great weekend, blessed as I am, to welcome our guest live in the studio. What he doesn't know about hospitality isn't worth knowing. <laughs> it is the one and only Elton Mooner. What Hello, a Elton. build up. What a build up. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, good, yeah. good morning, Johnny. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm very well. Nice to be here. Thanks it's lovely to be. Me. Welcome along to uh, the early show. And um, Domino's Pizza has reported a strong sales and upgrades growth. I heard yesterday that they are so hungry for growth that they're now starting to develop dominoes in villages. Ah, yes. Yeah, so bringing pizza to, um, you know, the beer and cider crew. Yeah, well, I think what, what's happening, it, put a bit of context, Papa John's, which is, which is another competitor pizza company, you know, a bit of doom and gloom there. They're closing some, actually, oh. as they sort of re reconfigurate, get themselves back on track, which I'm sure they will do. Meanwhile, Domino's, they've posted growth for 5.8%, um, which is equivalent of 1.5 billion So Domino's pounds. have cracked it at the expense they're of Papa John's. So what is, I mean, it's basically the product, isn't it? It comes down to Domino's being a more enjoyable experience for your average well, it punter? Could be, it could be that. It could be price. It could right. be delivery. Mm -hmm. They've just, for example, they were very independent. They would only use their own drivers. They've mm -hmm. just gone with Deliveroo. Ah, so that was a, that was a step that forward. That was a problem, wasn't it? But you're right in terms of what they're going to do. Do you remember we we didn't speak about it, but in the news, um, Greg's were targeting McDonald's breakfasts. Do you mm. remember? And they mm. they stole a big chunk of that. Yeah. Well, now you've got. Um, uh, um, Domino's are going to be targeting um, Greg's. They want a slice of that lunchtime action. Right. So what they're going to say, in, in a, if you go to America, 58% of people pick up Domino's straight from the shop. They right. go there. They don't right. wait for delivery. Right. In the UK, it's 38%. So there's some growth there. So what they're going to say is that we're going to put in some pop-up pubs, uh, pop-up pubs, yeah. pubs, yeah, yeah, I know what you pop-up places in, not villages so much, but in towns where you can just go in and they're going to do a slice of pizza, a cookie. I hate calling them cookies myself. I call them biscuits. Biscuits in yeah, England. A slice and a biscuit for four quid. <laughs> so they are saying we're going to take some that of that cheap, huh? yeah, some of that Domino's trade. So you know, I love it. You know, the innovation. Keep, you know, that, that that fight between companies. See who's winning. See who's got to reconfigure. So that's that's the that's the pizza news at the moment. That pizza news right here on Talk TV. Oh yes. <laughs> now, okay. Now the next question is, uh, what does it mean to be a B Corp? Business. Yes, a B Corp. Have you heard of Have you heard of B Corp? I I, I need to be educated. So me. yeah, so B Corp is um, something that is well respected across any industry, um, and, and a lot of people will seek out B Corp companies because they have this responsibility, responsible attitude to doing business. They're verified by um, a not for profits organisation called B Lab, and they have to meet very high standards, verified standards around accountability, transparency employee benefits, treating them well, what do they do with the, the local community and charities, the supply chain practices, what goes into their products. And it's a long process. It can take years to actually get to this stage. But once you've got it, you can stick it on your menu or stick it on your business and people will be attracted to that. Right. A couple of companies in my sector that have just been given that, Pizza Pilgrims, right. um, for authentic it's Italian. It's like a kite mark. It's, 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 a, it's basically saying, we do business well. We, we, we care about everything that we do in our right. business i mean it's very important that kind of um, provenance well it, it is it is it's it's um mm. yeah it's just you know well italian pizza company uh, pizza pilgrims they've got uh, they're in leeds they're in brighton they're in london yeah. they've got their they've just been given their uh, b corp status mm -hmm. and then double dutch drinks they make tonics yeah. um Reicha and joyce de Haas. you know these are all people who've started small yeah. grown and grown and this grown and great. grown and now they've got the b corp it. status so um so brilliant I yeah. think we need a B Corp in the bottom left-hand corner here to say that we are compliant in every single way, right here. Well, I'm not sure that we're going to get, when, when we open the contents of that uh, bag that I've got there for you, whether we're going to get the B Corp certification, but there you go. Sh should, we, should we get head off for this? Johnny's Mystery Prize. So I've got a, qu I've got a or question. Or Dave's, apparently, Dave being yeah. our producer. So I've got a question for oh, it's you. heavy. Look at that. <laughs> Yes, indeed. This is quite exciting. And it's it's basically, um, if, if I answer the question correctly, I win this bag. You win that. Bag. If and you if get I it get wrong, it wrong, just Dave doesn't have to do anything and he, he wins it. He just has to stare through the glass. But, of course, you? possession is nine-tenths of the law, so <laughs> try and get it off me, mate. 
OK, so the question is, so I've been speaking quite a lot, a, a while ago when um, uh, 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 LucasAid came up yeah. with a trademark for a particular name which, we, which James and I talked about, and then they released this product, and it's a, a little bit like Prime, it's very rare, OK? So LucasAid have come up with a new drink, and it's a new colour for them, you know, it's currently orange. It's orangey, yeah. yes. So what colour? Is it? You haven't got an A, B or C, it's just what colour. If you get it right, you get what's in there. Right, that. now what would appeal to me, let's think about this, I'm going to try and run through this with you, dear viewer, listener. If it was green, it would look like mouthwash. If it was blue, it would feel a bit undrinkable. If it was sort of brown or sort of dark, you might think it was alcoholic. So I'm going to go for something which might be raspberry or strawberry. But is, it aimed is it aimed at you? No, but I'm thinking mm. of, oh, is it for kids? Well, if you, if you think about Prime... Yeah. Right, that was, you know, it was sought after, it, it was rare, this product's rare, you know, maybe maybe a 20-year-old or a 17, 18, 19 would be out looking for this. But you know, don't I'm going to go for something like red-ish. Red-ish? Yes. OK, please take a look to see whether you keep that prize. OK. It's uh, sellotape in there, it makes it's, it slightly more difficult. Yeah, don't worry, you. it's uh, it's built for TV, but I've got a finger. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's lovely, what a lovely package, thank you, Will. I need, I need, the, I need the Elton Mooner knife here. Oh, you do? Oh, dear. OK, should sorry have, about this. should have done that, really. Oh, blimey. Here we go, oh, I've done it. I've, oh, look, OK. And let's pull out all these things. He always brings in booze for me. Blue? <laughs> I was thinking it can't be blue. Blue. It is blue. Lucasade blue. They, they, they use the... They trademarked Blucasade. Blucasade. Um, there is one. I do... Uh, although Dave has won the whole lot, he's got all of that. That's his. Well None done, of that's Dave. yours. Do you want to come and collect your bounty? Um... I am going to leave you there one you go, though, mate. which is a which is an energy drink. Ah, uh, because of course I need because it. Because you need it because you're in yeah, for Christo well, tomorrow. You've been. I up. am. I deserve it, don't I? Elton? You do deserve it. Yes. Thank you. So, <laughs> so you know, you don't go away empty-handed. No. Indeed. Um, that's great, Elton. Thank you very much for that. Elton Mooner is our hospitality expert, and he's still wearing. Uh, cufflinks because he is a proud former member of the Enduring the Blockheads. <laughs> I did one show, I did one song and one song only, that's all I did. Yeah, well, we, we have been hit by his rhythm stick this morning, <laughs> I can assure you. Now, the uh, fun and entertainment and serious news and current affairs continues right here on Talk TV with your breakfast show, Talk Today, with JJ, Anasobi and Rosie Wright follows the top of the hour at six o'clock. It's been absolutely fantastic standing in for James Max, and guess what? I was here all week and I'm here tomorrow as well for Christo. Christo's on breakfast. Stay tuned to Talk TV. How are you going to stop the vote? This is an international problem. How's that going for your party? I'm a millennial. You're a Victorian, I think. Good goodness helps weather people. I'm going to help the vet office. <laughs> I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid 